right, so thanks for watching. So someone on YouTube gave this nice comment and says, hey Payam, what is cosine of one plus cosine of two, etc., etc., up to cosine of n? And this is actually a very great question because it sort of illustrates that sometimes it's easier to make a more problem more complicated. Super paradoxical, but this is math. <laughs> And here's the trick. Well, this is a real thing, but let's quickly do an excursion into the complex world. So instead of considering cosine of one, cosine of two, up to cosine of n, let's consider the complex version, e to the i, e to the two i, plus da da da, plus e to the n i. And I explain to you later why this is indeed the complex version. But even though this is hard to evaluate, this is much easier to evaluate because this is e to the i, e to the i squared, plus dot dot dot, plus e to the i n. And you may notice this does look almost like a geometric series but usually the geometric series start with one. So let's just factor out the e to the i. So it's e to the i times one, plus e to the i, plus e to the i squared, plus dot dot dot, plus e to the i to the n minus one. And now indeed we can use the formula for the geometric series, which tells you that one plus r plus dot dot dot, plus r to the m is in this case, let's write it as r to the m minus 1 over r minus 1, which tells us the sum becomes e to the i times e to the i. Sorry, I forgot this plus 1 here. e to the i n minus 1 plus 1, which is e to the i n minus 1 over e to the i minus 1. Okay, if you want, this could be your final answer, but let's simplify this a little bit. And for this, we want to use the following fact. Namely, we want to use that e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over 2i equals to sine of theta. We want to turn this real. So, for real, yeah, for sure. <laughs> And so, from this, how about we factor out e to the i over 2. So e to the i, e to the i over 2. And why is that useful? Because we get e to the i over 2 minus e to the minus i over 2. And from this, since this is equal to e to the i n, let's do the same spiel and let's factor out e to the i n over 2. So that becomes e to the i n over 2 minus e to the minus i n over 2. Because again, if you multiply this, you indeed get the correct answer. And then, you know, this involves 2i, so let's just multiply top and bottom by 2i. Or I guess divide top and bottom by 2i. And this is actually legit. And this is great because this then becomes indeed the sine of n, sine of is, uh, n over 2. Because here theta becomes n over 2 here. And this then becomes sine of 1 half. Careful, not, not the same as like um, pi over 6. So if you do this, you do get, so e to the i, e to the i, n over 2, e to the minus i over 2, of sine of n over 2, over sine of 1 half. Well, if you simplify this, you know, 
1 minus 1 half, that's 1 half, and you're left with e to the i, n plus 1 over 2, sine of n over 2, over sine of 1 half. But now remember the nice formula, e to the i theta is cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. So this is really cosine of n plus 1 over 2 plus i sine of n plus 1 over 2. So if you multiply that out, you get cosine n plus 1 over 2 sine of n over 2 over sine of 1 half plus i times sine of n plus 1 over 2 sine of n over 2 over sine of 1 half. So we found that our thing here, e to the i plus e to the 2i plus dot 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 plus e to the ni equals to this junk, which What's nice about this is this is really the real part, and this is the imaginary part. So let me write that down, maybe. So this is the real part, and this is the imaginary part. And now, as I said, let's actually answer our original question. So let's go back to the real world. Legend of El Zelda esque move. You know, we're in the shadow world and now we're in the real world. Because notice, remember I said e to the i theta is this. So e to the i plus e to the 2i plus dot 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 plus e to the ni. That's really the same as cosine of 1 plus i sine of 1 plus cosine of 2 plus i sine of 2 plus dot 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 plus cosine of n plus i sine of n. And you see, there are a bunch of real and imaginary components of this. So let's put all the real components together. So cosine of 1 plus cosine of 2 plus dot 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 plus cosine of n plus i sine of 1 plus sine of 2 plus dot 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 plus sine of n. So if you, you know, put this quantity again in terms of real and imaginary parts, you notice that precisely the real part is this and the imaginary part is that, the sum of sines. real, imaginary part. And lo and behold, those two quantities actually measure the exact, or they calculate the exact same quantity. So because those two things here are equal, we can indeed compare the real parts and the imaginary parts, and we get that the sum of cosines equals to that and the sum of signs equals to that. Here's a grand conclusion. Grand conclusion, okay. We get that cosine of one plus dot 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 plus cosine of n, then equals to cosine of n plus one over two, sine of n over two over sine of one half, and not only that, we also get the dual inequality. So it's sort of we killed two, two birds with one stone. Sine of 1 plus dot 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 plus sine of n equals to sine of n plus 1 over 2, sine of n over 2 over sine of 1 half. And here's the cool thing. You can literally repeat the same procedure and get the same thing with x. So cosine of x plus cosine of 2x plus cosine of nx 
And surprisingly, you get the same inequalities, but with x's. So cosine of x, etc., etc., plus cosine of mx is cosine of m plus 1 over 2x times sine of nx over 2 over sine of x over 2. And same thing with sine. Sine of x plus blah, 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 plus sine of nx is sine of this times sine of that over sine of x over 2. How neat. So I think the moral of the story is don't be scared of the complex world. Sometimes it does make your problem easier, which is kind of neat. And by the way, um, if you let n go to infinity, you're in big trouble because actually in most cases the series diverges, so you don't really have an answer. So, but at least for finite n, you're good. All right, so if you liked, again, this math snack and uh, you would like to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.